Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Viewers, we welcome you to the Daily Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today is Saturday, June 11, 2022. And it is also a day we commemorate St. Barnabas, the Apostle. And today we prayed and asked that you bring your family together as we share the Word of God in this daily devotional. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of a new day. Thank you for waking us up and granting us this privilege to be alive in the land of the living. As we share in your word this morning, we ask, O oh God, that you reveal unto us the mysteries of your word. We ask that you impart your word in our hearts so that we go out this day, O oh God, to perform that word and to live by the understanding that you alone can lead and direct our lives. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We are taking our test from Acts of Apostles, chapter 11, verse 19 to 30. Acts 11, verse 19 to 30. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, and he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came, and has seen the grace of God, was glad and exalted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost, and of faith, and many people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Paul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and they stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Cladius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwell in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders 
by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we are looking at the topic, 11 qualities of Apostle Barnabas. Like I told you earlier, today we commemorate the Apostle Barnabas. Barnabas, as we saw in that passage of the scripture, was not a very um, popular apostle like Paul, Silas, and others, but who have a notable quality of his life that helped in the expansion of the gospel even in Jerusalem and the nations around them. And we found that this morning in his life. And so we're going to look at some of these qualities from his life that will also help us to live our lives as Christians, as children of God, as believers, so we can affect our environment, our family, the society at large. God helping us. Praise the Lord. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, might not be as popular as Paul, as I said earlier. However, he is notable in the Bible, and his lifestyle was very, very um, conspicuous. And we saw it there as we read in that passage. Barnabas is so trustworthy and so trustworthy as we read in that passage and grounded in faith and in the scriptures that we found as we read that passage in the faith and in the scriptures as far and he was sent as far as Antioch to represent the entire church in bringing up and helping the believers there who were a new converts coming into faith and he was sent there as one of the apostles to help in leading them, mentoring them, and bringing them to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we saw that in his life. He was a mentor who identified and built up rising stars that we found in his life. Those new converts who were coming up, he was there to nurture them. He was there to mentor them. And today, one of the things that is lacking in Christendom today is mentorship. Because it's something that takes time. It's something that takes time. As, as we read further, you will see how long it took um, Barnabas and Paul to mentor these Christians who were coming up these believers who were coming up, these rising stars, and that we found there. He was a very patient believer, a man of faith, a man who knew the scripture and will want to live out the life of the scripture in his day-to-day -day life. That we found there in that portion of the scripture. And this morning is an example for us that we should emulate. He helped in building them up. And not just that, he also took time to nurture those who were even rejected. Sometimes we find in the midst of our congregation, those who, um, that it's taking them time to actually live out the life of Christ in them. But for this apostle Barnabas, he took time patiently nurturing them in the faith, bringing them to the um, life and of the apostle. And also, we also, as we go further, you find that in verse 23 and verse 25, he not only gave up on these verses like John Mark, but molding them under God into variable instruments in the hand of God. He turned those who were nothing, who were people struggling with their faith, into great instruments in the hand of the Lord. 
He was commit a committed teacher, a great giver, a great giver, devoted to the gospel, to the welfare of the gospel. And that's also we find in our church today, very few persons who are devoted to the Lord and also giving their resources in the work of the gospel. That we, you, you look at the church today, we have very few persons who live out their life in this manner. But the man Barnabas, as we saw in that portion of the scripture, was one to be reckoned with. The Bible said he was a good man, filled of the Holy Spirit and faith. That we found in verse 24. He was a committed believer who will always want to make sure that those around him are not just those who are called believers, but those who live out their Christian uh, life and faith, and also put in all their effort in making sure that the work of the gospel do not suffer. Praise the Lord that we found in his life. He was a committed teacher, a giver, a devoted one. He devoted the whole year with the Apostle Paul in nurturing these believers. That will tell you the, his life. Then to nurture these new believers, those he mentored were so sound in the faith that people first called them Christians in Antioch. You could see that exemplary lifestyle that those who he tutored and nurtured who, who he took time to bring to the faith were first called Christians in Antioch. These were those who were actually um, a nobody as far as the Christian life was concerned. But he turned their lives through his mentorship. And we found out that he was not the one who, who will use this uh, adage, do what I say, but don't do what I do. No, he was that apostle who wants the believers, those he was nurturing, to do what they see him do. He was there as a giver. He was there committed to his faith. He was a good man. These are qualities that are rare today in our churches. And the essence why we are looking at this this morning is for you to take out time to look into your life and ask yourself this question. Is my life worth emulating? Is my life worth emulating? Is my faith worth emulating? Do I live out what I say as a Christian through my life, through um, what I do, my business place in the office, in my relationship with people on day-to-day -day activity, what would they say about me? We look at the life of Barnabas. People were testifying of how he lived his life, not just as one who professed Christ, but yet as one who lived out the life of Christ through his day-to-day -day, uh, living. And that is what emulating. And that is the essence why, well, as we commemorate the days and Barnabas uh, day, we also look at his life and see some of these examples we can emulate and use them to nurture our own lives and also nurture those around us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We go further as we see in verse 26 and also in Acts of Apostles chapter um, 4, verse 36 to 37, that these believers were first of all called Christians, first in Antioch, and they were those raised by this apostle um, Barnabas. And going further, we found out that he was trusted by the church so much that the relief materials gathered to help the church that was suffering drought in Judea was committed and trusted to him and brother Paul to send these relief materials to the brethren in Judea. 
what's a lifestyle? What a lifestyle of this man who could be trusted by the entire church in Jerusalem to commit relief materials, money, items into his hand, knowing that he was a man that can be relied upon. As a child of God, as a follower of Christ, can people rely on you? Can you be trusted with funds, whether in the society, in the office where you, where you work, maybe in that little organization where you lead, can they commit the resources of the organization into your hand and believe that whatever that have been decided upon to use that um, uh, materials for is what you will use them for. He was a man to be trusted. He was accountable. He was accountable. That was found in his life. He accounted for every resource given to him. He was not just the one who was interested in using other people's resources. He gave himself. He gave himself. And that was why he was called a man, or an encourager, a comforter. His life depicts the name that he bear. And not just that, he was a Christian who was true to his faith. A Christian true to his faith. As we look at this passage of the scripture, and I look at the life of the Apostle Barnabas this morning, evaluate your own life and ask yourself this question. What is my life like? What are the qualities in my life that others will see and emulate? What are the things in my life that people will look at today and say, wow, I don't even need to dwell so much in looking at the scriptures. I can find the scriptures in the character of this brother, this sister. Are you that kind of believer? I think this message this morning is self-evaluating self-searching, looking inward into your life and asking yourself this question, do I live up to expectation? Am I a mentor to people coming under me? Am I a mentor to people around me? When they look at my life, do they see Christ in me? Or do they see a man living in deceit? Barnabas was not a man of a deceitful life. He was a man true to his faith. And so this morning, God expects us to live a life true to our faith, not a life of deception. You say what you say, they should live by what you say and not what you do. No, God expects us to live our lives, not just on what we say, just on what we say with our man, but also through the life that we live. He was committed and trustworthy. Are you committed to your faith? Are you trustworthy? What level of sacrifice of time and resources have you made for the gospel? You see, many a times it is good to preach the word of God, to talk about the goodness of God and the wonderful things about God, but you yourself, do you practice what you teach? Do you practice what you say? He was a man who gave his time for the gospel. He sacrificed his time and resources. He sacrificed his all for in preaching the gospel. That is what is lacking in many of our lives today. We can preach, we can teach the word of God, but it is difficult for us to practice what we preach. Brothers and sisters, Let's learn from the life of Barnabas to live out what we preach so that we become those who our lives will be live of emulation, that the world will look at us and know that we are not just noisemakers. God will help us in the name of Jesus. As I begin to tidy up this morning, let's see the level of sacrifice of time and resources uh, through the life of Barnabas, we saw in that passage of the scripture, was put to work. Are you a fire extinguisher? One who don't encourage 
rising stars. We saw that as one of the remarks we made about Barnabas. He was an encourager of the uh, rising stars, those who are coming up. But today we find people, when they see people rising under them, they do everything possible to bring them down. They don't want people to rise beyond where they have reached as far as ministry is concerned, as far as their office is concerned, as far as their, their business enterprise is concerned. They want people to always be there to you know, honor them and reverend them as those who are at the head. No, I think that every parent will want his child to be more than him. That is the prayer of every parent. And so as one who has people under you, people watching you, people following you, people looking onto you, you should take out time to nurture them so that also you could look at them tomorrow and say, wow, what a wonderful thing God is doing in their life. Barnabas was that kind of apostle who made sure he impacted upon the life of the believers and saw them grow to a point whereby people could look at them as, ah, these ones are Christ-like. These ones are Christians. Their life size shows the life of Christ in them. As I tell, one thing we also saw in the life of Barnabas was that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and allowed the Spirit of God to control his life. He was filled the Holy Spirit, and allow the Spirit of God to control his life. He was not a man who wants to live by what his feelings, live by just the tenets of his environment. He allowed God to rule over his life. I pray that in your life, you will allow God to rule over your life. You will allow the Spirit of God to take hold of you and dictate how you live your life and what you do with your life daily. And as you do that, I know that the God of heaven will not abandon you as he did not abandon uh, Barnabas and Paul in their missionary enterprise. Barnabas was a missionary to the core and he suffered for the sake of the gospel. He gave for the sake of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, let's know that the call God has called us to become his children it may not be easy. In the course of life, it may not be easy. We may have to give, we may have to sacrifice, we may face persecutions, trials and temptation, but yet we must be resolute in our faith to know that what we are doing is unto the Lord and not unto man. As you consider that daily in your life, you will not find it difficult to do the will of God in your life, like we saw in the life of Barnabas. I pray for you that God will encourage you. God will enable you so that on day to day in your life, you will seek to do the will of God and not your own will. You will allow the Holy Spirit to dictate how you live your life, not how you want to live on daily basis. And I know that the God of heaven we help each and every one of us to become what he wants us to be. Godly examples to our generation, to our children, to our family, and the blessings of God will be upon our lives. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to radiate these godly qualities of Apostle Barnabas in our lives, so that as we live our lives daily, our own lives will be shining examples, will be the epistle in which others will look at daily to form their lives and fashion their lives according to your will. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com